Full Metal Alchemist Colin Brotherhood episode 37 and 38. Episode 37, the first homunculus. A bunch of Kimberly's men are showing up and they're evil. Winry is fixing up Ed's auto mail and Kimberly's acting like such a nice guy. Kimberly went and picked up Winry and he fed her all these like story. Oh, your parents were so noble and I was there and I recovered their bodies. Look, I'm smiling, I'm such a nice guy. All of a sudden, Ed remembers that Riso was like, are you in love with Winry? So he's like, oh my God, I'm suddenly very embarrassed. So now the auto mail can be in the cold and it's also a lot lighter, though the durability has gone down, which is bad because Ed breaks his auto mail quite often. Buccaneer walks in and he's like, look at the upgrades I've made to my auto mail. And Winry's like, oh my God, you are so cool. Winry goes off to look around at all the Northern auto mail because it's very interesting. Ed has been let out of prison, but Al is still stuck inside, so it's a good thing he's so patient. Armstrong has left a secret passageway so that they can get down and rescue their men from a week ago. And she wants to take full blame for what she did to General Raven, and her men are like, okay. She sends a bunch of men down to check on the men who were down there before, but we saw them all get killed. Meanwhile, Roy is learning about what's going on at Briggs from this flower lady. Oh, so they find all of the dead bodies. This could also mean that the bad guy's still around. Oh, they found a couple of alive guys. Oh, but there is just coming back. No! Oh, it retracted. That was really scary. Ah! Oh! <laughs> Meanwhile, Risa has gone to Bradley's house to drop something off, and they totally implied to us that little Bradley, his son, is evil. I'll wait for confirmation before I get too cocky. Okay, so now his eyes are going red and he's saying evil stuff. So, um, yeah, I think I'm gonna call it he's evil. <laughs> oh, so he's pride. He's the first homunculus. Oh my God, I, I don't even remember when I first said it. Remember that small child voice that Bradley was speaking to that he called pride? It's Bradley's son. Please don't kill Risa. Don't do it! Please don't kill her! <sighs> I'm so, so stressed out right now. Meanwhile, Kimberly is like, you have three tasks. One, find Scar. Two, find Dr. Marco. And three, carve a bloody crest into Briggs. <laughs> and Ed's like, what? Kimberly's like, I don't really care what happens. The reason I'm working with the homunculus is because I'm just curious. And Kimberly's like, I have a philosopher's stone. If you kill everyone in Briggs, then you can have it. Ed's like, ah, oh, I have to talk about this with Al and Winry. Ed explains, Winry, you're a hostage. So, uh. also, if I do it, I'll get a philosopher's stone. Then Al says, okay, you just, you know, make your own decisions. No, Ed, don't, oh, he's gonna do it. So Ed agrees and he's gonna go after Scar first because he wants to avenge Winry's parents. But I think he has an ulterior motive. Oh, okay, so he actually is gonna just do it because he, he's trying to find um, May. <laughs> so they're leaving in the morning and Winry's like, I'm coming too. She makes up this silly excuse that she has to go along to make sure his auto mail doesn't break down because she just recently fixed it up. And Miles is going too, and Miles is awesome, and he's totally voiced by Zorro. Okay, and there's no scene at the end of this episode, so let's go straight on to episode 38. Risa Hawkeye goes home, and she, she thinks about how um, Bradley's son was like, I'm always gonna be watching you from your shadow. Roy calls up Risa, and he's like, hey! And she's worried about saying anything to him because she thinks that Lil Bradley is watching her. She hangs up the phone and she totally has this little moment where she's like, I'm in love with him and I'm gonna marry him. Or at least maybe I'm just imagining that because I think they should get married. However, with the introduction of this um, female Armstrong character, I feel like I also want Roy and Lady Armstrong to get married. Ah, it's so difficult. It's hard when you, when you uh, support two couples with this with one Ugh. then again maybe miles can marry armstrong <laughs> i love that it always jumps to marriage <laughs> there's no dating we're gonna start this relationship with a marriage <laughs> everyone's looking for scar 
And they're all splitting up and Ed and Al get stuck with these two guys, one of which has an amazing mustache. They're, they're feverishly trying to lose these guys. Seems like they did a pretty good job. That was quick. Okay, so all of a sudden, May just comes out of nowhere and she's like, Alphonse, I missed you! Because remember, she's in love with him. Oh, Winry was inside Al. <laughs> oh, and here's Dr. Marco. And here's Mr. Yoki. Apparently they have a history. I love the way this is being presented to us like an old style movie. <laughs> Yoki was some big wig ahead of some mines. So I guess he tricked Yoki into selling the mines to him by giving him some gold, but the gold was actually coal? coal? And then he got beat up and accused of crimes from the military, so he had to escape. It seems like he went into Armstrong's manor and met a bunch of <laughs> Armstrong-like people. I want to go to that house. <laughs> no one was listening to the story. Miles is like, I'm awesome! And Kimberly's like, I'm an asshole! That's what's been happening in the meantime. <laughs> These two guys find Scar pretty easily, actually. Dr. Marco is like, I found this book from Scar's brother. If it's written in ancient Ishbalan, can they ask Miles to do it? So Scar is fighting and he's hit and I want to care, but but he's he killed Winry's parents. I mean, but you know, you feel bad for him because of what happened to him, but he killed a lot of people too. It's it's difficult. Oh, here's Ed and Al. Even though Ed and Al realize that these two chimeras were actually uh, Kimberly's men, they pretend like, oh my goodness, I'm so afraid, let's attack them, oops. Ed's pretty excited because his new automobile is so light that he can, he can travel so fast. So Ed's like, if you're really our ally, then show us proof. So he's tricking them to turn back into humans. So while one of them is in the process of turning back, Ed knocks him out. <laughs> And Al just walks up to the other one and like strangles him, so he falls unconscious. And now they still have to deal with Scar. Scar is about to attack, but then Wynn reappears and she's like, stop it! And while he's distracted, Ed and Al attack. And they bind up his evil arm. Oh, and Miles is there too. Miles is like, so anyway, Scar, you know, you're Ishbalan, I'm Ishbalan too, it's awkward, but I have to kill you. But Winry's like, I want to ask him something first. Hang on one second. And she's like, why? Why? Just why? And he says, anything I say would just be an excuse. Just know I killed them and that's all. Kaboom? Meanwhile, back at Briggs, the soldiers reach the exit again, but the 24 hours have been up and they, they said cover it up if 24 hours have passed, but she didn't cover it up, yay! And they brought back the dead bodies and they brought back the alive people and everyone's out and safe. <laughs> But it turns out um, Armstrong was like, my watch is broken. <laughs> Yay. I love her. Armstrong was reflecting on how the winter is so nice because it's only black and white. But when we look up, the sky is blue. Bunch of people arrive. They're expecting some kind of explanation. I don't know who they are, but I assume they're wondering about General Raven's disappearance. Meanwhile, the kaboom was Scar escaping and he's got Winry. But I think it's another ploy. Wow. So I'm pumped about the reveal that uh, Bradley's son is evil. Oh, because I knew that so long ago. And also just like mm, Armstrong's sister is just amazing. Her name is Olivier. I feel weird calling her Olivier though because I feel like she's she's such like a powerful woman that I'm gonna go on calling her Lady Armstrong. And if Roy hasn't progressed at all, I still think he'll come up to Briggs. <laughs> and I'm wicked worried about Risa. She just has to gumbutt A is all. I'll see you next time for 39 and 40. Bye.